Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in again and welcome to Watercolour Back to Basics Part 2. By now you should have accomplished a sky and that's the easy part and you may have done two or three so putting the landscape in is the next stage for this. I've done a little sketch, a compositional sketch which I think helps with the strategy before you begin this. Um, knowing where you're going to put certain elements and how far they're going to be away from your sky. Here's my little thumbnail and uh, you can see it's a rough drawing of some of the elements and the general composition. So I'll be talking to you as we go along. First of all it's important to wet down your sky um, about a third of the way down from the top of your painting. This will help with dissipation of form when you come to put the washes in the background area. As we can see here, working wet into wet with vermilion and cobalt blue. Here I'm putting in some cerulean blue to establish the horizon line. It also creates some coldness in the far distance. My palette has changed somewhat. I'm using a vermilion and cobalt blue mix for my dark and later on a burnt sienna um, and I'll try and explain the colours as I go along but here you want to work rapidly and establish my dark values here in the middle distance are made from a stronger mix of vermilion and cobalt blue I'm going to be using warmer colours as the painting comes forward I want to bring the painting forward. Here I'm using some raw sienna with the cerulean blue and it's starting to warm up here in the middle distance. I'll introduce the warm colours gradually because the general theory of aerial perspective is that cold colours will recede and warm colours will advance in the painting. Also, I think the motto here is speed with accuracy. You can see that generally I'm using the larger mops and warmer colour. And just here I'm softening the edge of that wash with a damp brush. I'm keeping my washes going with raw sienna and cerulean blue, allowing them to mix freely on the paper. At this stage I'm considering whether or not to use my burnt sienna. I think I'll introduce it. Yeah. And that's made a difference. It's, it's brought the whole thing forward a bit. And a slight hint of purple here in the front made from permanent rose and ultramarine. I think it will add some excitement in the warmer tones. Well it's time now to add that darker line of trees in. I'm using ultramarine and raw sienna mixed in the palette and for the darker areas that I'm putting in at the moment I've added some burnt umber to that mix softening the edge with a damp brush before I put some more shapes in with just raw sienna this time and for the dark green on this one I'm using cerulean blue and raw sienna just going to use a little bit more of that burnt umber mix. Uh, it gives more form and shadow to the base of this line of bushes and trees. So you can see the colours getting a little bit warmer as it comes nearer to us and stronger and darker. I'm going to use a little bit more burnt umber to bring out the form and also the warmth in the depth of shadows. Burnt umber is an amazing colour. Now I'm going to add slashes of burnt sienna to really warm up that line of trees. This is the time to add in one of the features. I'm using my small mop and you can, as you can see it comes to a razor like tip. Really useful for this kind of calligraphic work. My dark is made from burnt umber ultramarine. Now using the mop slightly splayed at the tip. I'm trying to get some broken edges and get some texture as well. Mm -hmm. 
add some darker paint this time with a mix of cerulean blue and burnt umber just to give this tree a little bit more form and a little bit more pop I'm fashioning this tree to my liking, so a few more branches and I think it could be integrated a little bit more with the field in the foreground. Hmm, the time has come to put those cows in, so looking at my sketch, I noticed that I started off with the heads, because the heads will determine the size of the whole group. With this group, I will be putting the shadow sides in before anything else, leaving the light sides from the underwash. Okay, I know what you're thinking, this requires a lot of practice, and you'd be correct, it does. But this kind of practice gives you the looseness that you require in this type of watercolour. Think of it more like an impression at first, rather than an exact uh, copy of what you're looking at. Yeah, let's work on this cast shadow here. Um, I've added some green to my previous mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Now work rapidly, and you can see that my, I'm using my brush um, a little bit in a directional manner. Now I'm going to use China White for some of the light features on the cows. Um, just remember that China White is largely uh, more transparent than other types of whites that you can get, such as designer's gouache, which may leave maybe a chalky residue on your watercolour. I'm now going to use some more burnt umber in the shadow areas to create a bit more form on these animals. I would leave darks till the last part when fashioning these sort of things um, rather than having to move them and overwork them later on. Well this little group seems to be coming together quite well and take your time with this thing um, it requires a lot of concentration and keep standing back to look at the whole thing every now and then. Remember, it's the collective that's important, not the parts. I'm adding a little bit more China White here. A word of caution. Make sure that the China White mix is milky or single cream consistency. It's used mainly for body color. Uh, not to cover up mistakes. More touches of burnt umber here just before we finish with these and now I'm going to darken up the car shadows in the grasses. I'm using these shadows as negative shapes to make the cows pop a little bit more. Yes, and I know at this stage that I'm going to have to darken the surrounding area, so I'm going to put some large washes, raw sienna, ultramarine, all the way across the foreground. And always take the opportunity when doing large washes of colour to allow the colours to merge more freely on the paper. That way you'll get a looser result. I've now moved towards using a square brush uh, with a split end, um, a, a dry brush, if you will, uh, with mixes of burnt umber. And you can see as I drag it across the painting, it produces grasses or a grass-like texture. I'm gradually darkening the field behind them and they seem to be fitting in a little bit better with their surrounding area now. Don't be scared to use a square brush and uh, this one's a half inch um, synthetic. At this stage I've decided to do some splashes using a round brush with China White. I don't know if you can see this but I am tapping with my forefinger whilst directing the brush across the paper. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed doing it. Um, here's a res finished result. Um, if you haven't learned anything on this, you 
picked up a few useful hints. So thanks for tuning in again and um, I'll see you on the next one. Ooh, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below and if you've liked this video please press subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.